thought just occurred to me, while me and my boy Thumper were uh, chilling in the backyard here, I don't have any students booked today. This never happens, it's a Saturday. I was supposed to be away on a trip, then that got canceled. So yeah, I've kind of got a Saturday off. I think I'm gonna load the truck up and drive down to Key Largo and get a dive in, because why not? But before I do that, I wanna show you how to build a saver dive kit. So roll intro. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Divers Ready. My name's James. If you love diving as much as I do, hit that subscribe button and click that bell icon and you'll never miss any of our content. Here at Divers Ready on this channel, I use my years of experience as a professional dive instructor to help make you a better diver. So this is my saver dive box. And it has done exactly that, saved many a dive. The reason I thought to do this video is on my very last dive with a student, I noticed as I was doing my pre-dive checks that there was a little nick in my mask strap. So into the saver dive box I went, pulled out the mask strap, changed it out before the mask strap broke, which saved the dive. And it meant I didn't waste my time, I didn't waste my students' time. I know the value and I, I've learned the lesson many, many times of having a well-prepared saver dive kit. And I wanna help you to do the same. Being a good diver means being self-reliant. If your mass strap needs changing, you shouldn't be depending on somebody else to do that for you or provide you with a spare mass strap. You should have one with you ready to go. If you're diving with a commercial dive operator, it's not really their job to fix your gear unless you're paying them specifically to fix your gear. And one of the ways that you can prepare for those uh, eventualities is to have a well-stocked saver dive kit. So what I'm gonna show you in a minute is my every dive saver dive kit. It's the core basics, the staples that I take with me regardless of the type or the location of dive. You're gonna to wanna to personalize your dive kit for the type of diving that you do. If you do, for example, a lot of cold water diving and you're in a dry suit a lot, you're gonna to wanna to put zipper wax in there, maybe seal repair kit. Whenever I go ice diving, I always throw a couple of hand warmers into my saver dive kit. If you're diving in a very remote location, you might wanna double up on some items in your saver dive kit if they're going to be hard to get at your destination. I mean, I even know a rebreather diver who takes his complete rebreather with him when he goes off to Trip Lagoon or wherever, and another identical rebreather that he just uses for parts so he can swap out between one and the other. You don't necessarily need to take a whole workshop with you when you're going for a week in Cozumel, but the following items are the ones that I consider any dive anywhere. These are things you really should have with you. There's nothing too flash about the actual box I use for my saver dive kit. It's a weather tight tote. I think you can pick them up at Target for just a couple of bucks. Uh, weather tight, not water tight. I wouldn't take it swimming or anything, but I've been dragging this thing on and off of dive boats for long enough that if it was gonna leak, it probably would have by now. Let's have a quick look at what's inside. So what I have here is actually a small fishing tackle box uh, bought from a marine supply store. Always essential cable ties, great for uh, changing a mouthpiece out. There's a selection of O-rings divided roughly by use. Regular later o-rings i've got some viton o-rings for high o2 content use velcro strap just to secure any loose items i keep spare contact lenses because if i lose one that's the dive over so that is truly a safer dive item i keep two low pressure and two high pressure port plugs and also two din inserts uh you never know when they're going to come in handy and then anything that i have that has a user changeable battery i always make sure i've got spare batteries for so in my case it's a couple of C batteries for one of my lights. Uh, my dive computer has user changeable double A's and I've got some triple A's there for a little mini strobe that I have. Of course, a knife, carry a knife, save a life. A pair of tin snips, always useful for cutting away an old mouthpiece. There's one small adjustable wrench, which is great for hose configurations, which is I'd rather always use the right size wrench for the job, but this saves carrying all the different sizes of wrench that you'd possibly need. Uh, one flathead and one Phillips head screwdriver. And then I also carry a stainless steel pick which is useful for getting o-rings out of grooves be careful with the stainless steel pick never use it around soft metals like brass because it'll scratch real easily sharpie to label tanks also in my saver dive kit, we have two different kinds of scuba lube. In this syringe is crystal lube, which is an incredibly expensive lubricant, uh, but it's used for high 0.2% contact points because it has a very low flammability risk. And then a little tub of silicon for more generic uses. Duct tape to label the tanks. And let's be honest, if it can't be fixed with duct tape, it can't be fixed, right? Spare bungee. 
Always keep spare bungee in the kit in case I need to rig a backup mouthpiece um, or make any corrections to my backplate wing harness. Then I keep a small spool with some line on it. Line's useful if I need to make a cave or not, attach an accessory, attach a piece of gear on. As far as Allen keys go, I keep a size eight for converting din tanks to yoke using the inserts. And I also keep a selection of smaller Allen keys for changing out port plugs. This little diving moldy tool has got a couple of nice little features on it. One of which is the tank valve key. And it's also got a brass pick, uh, which is great for the softer metal jobs. One bolt snap and one double ender. Always useful pieces to have in your kit bag. I'm gonna make a video on scuba hacks coming up, uh, but suffice to say, I always keep a couple of double calamaris. They have multiple applications. And yeah, like I said, I'll make a dive hacks video in the future and show you what I use them for. Needless to say, I do not use them for retaining a snorkel. Also in my saver dive kit, I keep a glow stick. It's just one of those snap and shakes, provides illumination for about uh, an hour. Uh, just super useful thing to have on a night dive in case you forget your strobe. Um, you can just tie it onto the back of your tank and make sure your buddy always knows where you are. Next up, we have Reef Safe Sunscreen. Uh, this is my particular favorite from Stream to Sea. Particularly, you know, being down here in South Florida with the vicious sun that we've got, I tend to get burnt real easy. So this is a must for me in my saver dive kit. I don't know if it saves the dive, but it saves the James, that's for sure. And of course, super important that it's reef safe, which is why I always use Stream to Sea. Uh, no sponsorship deal here. It's just my preferred brand. Then we have some basics, obviously a fin strap for whichever fins I'm diving that particular day. Uh, this one happens to belong to a set of Mares of anti quattros. Spare mass strap, silicon, of course. Um, see my other video on uh, mask selection for why. If you break your mask strap before a dive and you, you don't have a spare to change it out with, that's dive over. Always keep a spare mouthpiece. Um, to be honest, I'm not sure why because I never bite through my mouthpieces, but I know that other people have done. So it's just a, a nice piece of kit that in case somebody needs one. And last but not least, um, one of my very favorite tools, something I use all the time, and that's a tank checker. If I'm renting tanks or if I'm uncertain of the pressure of tanks, just slap that bad boy in and check the pressure before I set my, all my gear up on on that tank to find out that it's low and I have to change to a different tank. So always keep a tank checker. Uh, it's not an expensive tool, but it's something I use a lot. So that's my core saver dive kit. And those are items that I recommend everyone carries. But as I said, I really want you to make sure you personalize your kit based on the type of diving that you do, the local conditions, the equipment that you carry, and the places that you're gonna go diving. Uh, I'm gonna go, oh my god. I'm gonna go down to Key Largo now and get that dive in and you are very welcome to join me. So follow me. Favorite saver dive kit item? Uh, it's the uh, mass strap. If uh, it's compatible with your fins, it can even double as a fin strap too. I didn't do that three weeks ago. Favorite saver dive item? Uh, the bungee straps actually on, on flashlights. Yes. They also make excellent fin straps. Yeah, you gotta have zip ties and you gotta have the uh, retainer houses. Mine's probably a snorkel keeper. You know, snorkels or attach an octopus or just something to, you know, keep things tucked away and they can be used for multiple things. Save a dive kit item. Ooh. Oh, my scuba multi tool. Yeah. This is my buddy Mitch. We're diving together today. Mitch, tell us where you're from. I am originally from London, England. It's an absolute peach of a day out here, guys. So we're about to ready to uh, do our pre-dive check. I'll put some footage from the dives at the end of this video. Yeah, don't forget to smash that subscribe button for us. I hope this video helped you with your Saber Dive Kit if you're building it yourself. Uh, my name's James. This was your Divers Ready video for this week. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you on the next one.
You're such a weirdo. Stop being weird in my video. Come here. You're such a weirdo.